we're going to talk about photographing birds. It is one of my favorite hobbies to do. I like the challenge of finding the birds, uh, finding a new bird to add to my list. By the way, I am up to 100 birds photographed, different species of birds. So come with us as we walk down this uh, little island here. We're going to go all the way to the end because there's a bunch of birds down there. And I will give you six of my favorite settings to help give you a clear shot of birds in motion. Now there's a lot of different ways to find the birds that you want to photograph. Sometimes I'm just out for a walk, but I always take my camera with. But if I want something specific, I'm going to look at what is the food source for the birds where I'm at. Is it nesting season? And then when I get out there, you want to find out what is the wind direction. Birds typically land and take off into the wind. So if you have the wind at your back or at your side, that'll help ensure that they're not flying away from you as you photograph them. Now my favorite camera and lens is a Nikon with the Tamron 150 to 600 millimeter lens. It's a great lens for bird photography and I pretty much use it all the time. Now I do use my bridge camera whenever I don't feel like taking the large camera with me. I use the bridge camera for videos and sometimes for the bird photography. Number one, shutter speed and AFC. I almost always have it set on AFC continuous servo and that's for subjects that are moving. And my starting point is usually 1 3200th of a second for shutter speed. And when I take off on a hike, I make sure my camera is already set for these settings just in case the bird surprises me uh, by coming out in front out of some long grass or in the trees. Sometimes it's just unexpected. Number two, AF points. I start with as few AF points as I can and then move up if I can't keep the AF sensor on my subject. When I move it up, I use normally I use 9 point or 21. Very rarely do I use 51 point. Number three, I normally use matrix metering. Every camera is listed a little bit different. Check your manual, what works best for you and your camera. Number four is exposure mode. I use auto exposure quite a bit with the auto ISO. It's one less thing you have to worry about to let the camera choose the ISO. And when there's a lot of commotion and background changes in light, I use full manual. And spot metering is my favorite when using that. Number five is aperture. My average settings that I use for bird photography are usually f5.6 to f8. I shoot wide open if the subject is far away. And if the subject is close, I stop down a couple of stops. But remember, when considering your f-stop, think about distance and focal length. It is a balance between all of these settings that will help you get a clear, crisp shot of birds in motion or birds sitting still. So let's take a look at the next few photos. The first three, my shutter speed was a little too slow. I had it set at, at my start point at 3200, but there was a little too much blur in different areas of the bird. So then I bumped up that shutter speed, and this is the result. Thank you. 
Well, we made it to the end of the island. And here's all the birds that we saw from a distance. I hope the tips that I gave today in the video might help you with having more fun with your bird photography. Not only is it a challenge to photograph birds in flight, but I think birds can be quite humorous at times. They make me, oh, <laughs> this is another kind of bird. It just happened to be flying over when we were out on the island. But just the birds' mannerisms, they can make me laugh. It's relaxing to watch them like all these little guys hopping around on one leg. So next is a few photos of birds that I photographed here on the coast. And stick around to the end for previews of the next video. <laughs> Next week, we're going to take a look at some of the other sea creatures on our walk down the beach. From shipwrecks to stingrays. And a new bird that I have never seen before. I want to thank you for watching, and as always, I hope to see you next time on Adventures Outdoors.